Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. Today we've got a crazy story of a mother trying to arrest a 4 year old child. But first a story from Broken Dreamer 1997, my entitled mother grounded me for getting lost and missing the bus. For context, my mother and I have always had a pretty rocky relationship and everyone I went to school with was always terrified of her. My mom told me when I started high school that as long as it didn't affect my grades or chores, which included babysitting, I could join after school activities, but I also had to make sure to find my own rides. I was 14 when I started high school and graduated a few months before turning 18 as she was too busy taking care of my five younger sisters, two of whom played sports through the middle school and the other three were too little to be left home alone. I tried going to activities like basketball and the school play, and my mom usually came up with some BS excuse to ground me and make me drop out. There was one sport she didn't mind and actually forced me into without giving me a chance to decide for myself. Softball. I had played since I was 7 and had a pretty decent arm. I could stand halfway between the fence outlining the field and the dirt of the softball field and accurately throw as far as home base, and I'd done so on multiple occasions and I could catch a pop fly and return it faster than most kids, which made me a pretty good outfielder. Freshman and sophomore year, I took PE with one of the star softball players, and she and the assistant coach both saw how good my arm was and started nagging me about playing for the school. Being too polite to tell them that I truly didn't want to play, I remember that my mom always claimed I could use her as an excuse to get out of any situation I didn't want to be in and claimed I would ask my parents. By the end of my sophomore year, they caught on and actually called up my mom, who was a lot more thrilled than I was about the idea. She demanded to know why I never told her about wanting to join the team, then insisted I join, even though I told her I didn't want to. I was bullied a lot in high school and a lot of the bullies were actually on the softball team, which made it all the worse. She signed me up for the softball team against my will and made me start attending softball practice throughout the summer which wasn't as bad as I originally thought. Even though I was bullied by about half the team, the other half were underclassmen who despised the bullies and actually stood up for me multiple times throughout the summer and I became friends with all of them. My mom arranged for me to ride with a friend of hers for the summer so she didn't have to worry about it. And I actually didn't have to worry about too many chores or babysitting when I got home. Pretty sweet deal, right? Well, on this particular day, not so much. As I said, my mom refused to take me to anything related to softball, despite the fact that she was the one who forced me to join. However, she claimed that the activities bus, which ran from the high school to the middle schools and back, was supposed to stop by the field and pick up any in need of a ride. So she told me on the first day back to school that I was supposed to take the activities bus home. The first day of school passed, and I went to practice as I would every day for the rest of the season, But when I got out, something didn't feel right. I had seen a bus driving down the highway, which was in full view of the field, but it never stopped at the field. It took a bit, especially since the coaches were in a hurry to get home, but I found out that the activities bus never stops by the softball field, and that it went to the middle school only, which was clear across town. Side note, the field we practiced at was in another town 4 miles from my house and 2 miles from the high school. Since I didn't really know everyone who was left, I decided to call my mom and explain the situation, hoping that she would be gracious enough to come get me. The following conversation ensued. Mom said, What do you mean the activities bus didn't come? Your coach said that it would, and I told you to take the bus. Did you decide that you didn't want to and call me as soon as you purposely missed it? Me, heat sick and holding my school bag and softball bag, said, no, I didn't. The bus stops at the middle school, which is clear across town, and I don't know the way. It never stops at the field. Mom says, so, just walk over to the middle school then. I say, mom, I've never been to the middle school before. I don't know the way. She says, yes, you do. At this point, she was getting huffy and impatient with me. I see you already missed the first bus. Get to the middle school and take the next one home. We'll discuss your attitude when you get there. With that, she hung up, and I felt the panic already setting in. The biggest problem I had at this point was the second bus would only go to the high school, which would have opened up a whole new world of trouble. It was at that point that I remembered that one of my favorite teachers was still working and lived in the same area as my family and realized I could ask her for a ride once I got back to the high school. 
She never left school until 6, which is when I would be there. So, with my mom's warning fresh in my mind, I started to walk from the softball fields to the middle school, not really sure what other options I had. That was the biggest and stupidest mistake I've ever made, and I learned pretty quickly just how colossal this mistake was. I hadn't gotten more than a few blocks down the road when I ran into so many twists and turns that I was hopelessly lost. Worst of all, by the time I reasoned that I should retrace my steps and just go back to the softball field, I didn't even know where to begin. I'm not fully sure what possessed me to keep going despite the obvious mental breakdown I was having, but I kept going anyway, looking for any landmark that would tell me where I was. Thankfully, after another 15 minutes, I ended up a block from the public library and cried as I hurried to the front steps, exhausted and a bit more heatsick. As soon as I sat down on the front step, I saw the time and realized that I'd already missed the second activities bus and started crying all over again, now having to think of how to get home. My town was literally four miles away, and I was already pretty sick from everything. I tried calling my mom, knowing she would get mad at me, and she didn't answer. I was about to give up hope and go inside to ask the librarians for help when I remembered that my dad would be off around that time. Realizing he was my last hope without getting the cops called to my mom, I called him, desperately praying for him to pick up. He did. I explained everything to him as clearly as possible, my voice still trembling from the exhaustion, panic, and relief that was overwhelming me and he had a hard time understanding me. All he got out of the initial conversation is that I was at the public library in a different town and needed a ride home. He could tell that I wasn't feeling so good and clearly upset, so he told me to go inside, pick out a book, and wait for him, promising to call me as soon as he arrived. I felt bad for making my dad drive at least half an hour out of his way to come get me, but I was thankful that I was at least going to make it home safely. I knew my mom was going to be furious with me and probably ground me for a minimum of a week if she didn't decide to make me quit the softball team, but I didn't care. I was exhausted and ready to end this terrible day. It took my dad an hour to get there, and when he did arrive, I hurried out of the car and explained everything once more as he drove me home. I was finally calmed down enough that I was much easier to understand, so my dad was able to hear everything. He was shocked and asked what made my mom think that it was okay to put me in that situation in the first place. He promised he would talk to my mom and handle it for me and instructed me to take a cold shower when I got home. When we arrived, my mom was furious and started yelling at me, wondering where I was and why I wasn't home before then. How dare I bother my dad and make him come pick me up? My dad wasn't having it. He excused me from the kitchen and sat down to have a long argument with my mom and I could hear them yelling in the kitchen while I got through the shower, but I couldn't tell what exactly was said. Apparently, my mom lied, saying she told me to stay at the field and she would come get me. Then she told my dad that I was gone, so she went home, assuming I'd gotten a ride with someone else. My dad didn't really believe her, especially since my mom was a massive control freak, who panicked if she came home for my sister's game to find out I wasn't home, but walking the dog. Of course, she always insisted that I didn't need to text or call to let her know, as it was considered my chore, but she still panicked if I didn't, so I always did. My dad asked for my phone, and I showed him my call log, which confirmed the story for him, and he told my mom everything that happened while she tried to blame it all on me and my poor decision making, while denying at least half of it now. I felt bad for my dad as he worked in the oil fields at the time, and it was bad enough that I had him come pick me up. So when he turned to me and said that I had his permission to ask any parents or teammates for a ride regardless of how well I knew them, I let things end there and went downstairs to do my homework. A bit annoyed at the fact that my mom demanded that I miss dinner because of my stupidity. As I figured, I was grounded for the next two weeks, losing TV, radio, even my library books. Believe me, my mom grounded me so often for the dumbest of reasons that I preferred alone time in my room. But my mom made me see the season through, which didn't bother me as much as she wanted it to. She never even bothered to show up to a single game when I was listed for JV. And she even blamed me when the JV team didn't make it to state, even though all the other parents were amazed by my double plays thanks to pop flies and my strong arm. 
They tried to ask her to let me play my senior year as well, and she insisted that it wasn't a good idea because I was bullied by all the upperclassmen all season and didn't need to sit through another season of it. Honestly, I think she preferred me not having an excuse to come straight home after that. Considering OP's mom was a control freak, it seems to me like people didn't want to deal with her or go against her probably because they were so stubborn that they would dig their talons into the ground and try to find any way to get their way. Probably beat you down with statement after statement about how you're wrong and they're right. Until you just get to the point where it's like, okay, fine, whatever, just do it. Just leave me alone. Would you guys agree that this is the kind of mom that you leave the state and stop talking to them all together over? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And by the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below too. If you do so, you'll never miss any of my daily videos. And each video has a bunch of great stories, like our next one from Zeroga21, entitled Aunt Demands My Mother and Siblings Pay For Her Cell Phone, TV, and More. To start the story off, you'll need some information. My aunt and my mother hate each other since childhood, and my aunt was very manipulative to my grandparents forever. As an example, when both were young, about six or seven, my aunt called my mom by every slur she knew. My mother just shrugged and told her, if you think so, and that pissed my aunt off. She hit my mom, walked to their dad, and claimed to him that my mom did everything to her that she actually did to my mom. That made my grandfather go up to my mother and heard her close to a knockout. Meanwhile, my aunt just stood in the corner and watched, smiling and chuckling. Such things happened all the time. My grandparents never asked if anything my aunt did was a lie or not. But whenever my mom said something, she would lie. My aunt was just the youngest and favorite child that couldn't be wrong. Now to the actual story. My sister got a job in the military and needed a new car for her and her son. She asked my mother and stepdad if they could help in any way, because my stepdad had a lot of contacts and he did everything he could. At the end, my sister decided to lease a car and buy it off in a few years. So she started to go do her paperwork and got everything done and sent the papers off to the car dealer, but it got denied. Nobody knew why, so she called the place and they told her she had a Shufa entry for unpaid phone bills. For all the non-Germans here, just a short description, the Shufa is like a list from a private organization where everybody's written on who was in debt, and whenever you try to rent an apartment or want to get a loan and such stuff, the person you try to get it from can ask the Shufa if you've got an entry there to help decide if they want to let you get the thing or not. I don't fully understand how it works myself, so I try to give as good of a simple explanation as I can give. Everyone got confused because my sister had a phone but always paid everything. My stepdad told her to go to a lawyer and find out what happened. The lawyer asked around and found out what happened. It was real. My sister had unpaid phone bills. The bills were for two of the newest iPhones at the time and their contracts with the phone company. My sister was single, had a Samsung at the time, and her son was too young to have a phone. So she surely didn't need two iPhones. The lawyer dug deeper and he found out the phones were ordered to an address that didn't belong to my sister but to the address of my aunt my whole family already knew what had happened but decided to call her first she denied everything and told us that she doesn't even have an iphone but when she was asked about the contract in the name of my sister she said she used the wrong name and will get it fixed that's most definitely a lie because she would have to sign like three different papers while writing the name of my sister every time instead of hers. And their names weren't similar so she couldn't mix them up easily. So my family did go the legal route and sued her for that. We actually needed to do that to get the Shufa entry removed for my sister so she can get her car. In those legal procedures we found some other things out. My aunt actually also got an internet contract and the payment for her TV in the name of my brother, who only turned 18 some months ago. To get any contract in Germany without the consent of your parents, you have to be 18 or older. And she got our electricity bills in the name of our grandparents. I was just 16 at the time, so luckily she couldn't do any payments in my name. She didn't pay a cent for any of them and said things like, I'm a single mother, I need help with all of those things and you guys can afford it. Everyone from my side of the family was pissed. Besides my grandparents, we'll get to that later. She didn't just take payment in the name of my family, she didn't tell anyone about them and made us get in debt for her own luxury items. 
We couldn't afford any of this, but she did it in our names. So the lawyer starts to get everything for the lawsuit ready when my grandparents called my sister and my mother. They wanted us to drop everything and just pay for the things. My aunt would deserve it because we didn't pay for thing X in the past. X equals she wanted my mom to pay her 100 euro because me and my brother ate with her and her son twice. Of course, my family didn't stop the lawsuit and my aunt lost the case. She had to pay for everything she got in the other's names, besides the things with my grandparents. They didn't sue her because it's her daughter and she was in the right all the time in their eyes. And my aunt just got a fine and not much more. End of the story, my sister got her car and was happy about that, but everyone just hated my aunt more than ever. My aunt is just the classical German Karen and did a lot more shady stuff, but I don't know where to post that story. I don't know if there's a weak link in the German chain or if the aunt somehow managed to get a hold of a lot of personal information, but it's very surprising to me that they could open all of these accounts in various family members' names without any of them really finding out at all. Either way though, it sounds to me like the grandparents are advertising for the aunt to just take everything from them. Just put the grandparents' names on everything, they'll pay for it, they can't do any wrong. Imagine still coddling your fully grown adult that also had been revealed to be stealing from you. Our next story is from Alexa Vittoria 1999, entitled Mother Abandoned His Kid in a Restaurant to Go Relax for Three Hours. Okay, Reddit, it's not my story, it's a story I saw on the news. The entitled mother, 38 years old, was going to another town. She's from the city I live, with her son, 11 years old. Then, she decided to bring her son to a restaurant, ordering food for her son, and telling the staff that they have to babysit him, and that she'll be back in 45 minutes. Weird, right? Well, keep listening, please. The boy was on his tablet during this time, but it's been over 45 minutes. The staff called the entitled mother, no answers. An hour passed, they called again, nothing. Two hours passed, still nothing. And then more than three hours passed, the staff got worried and called the police. They found her in a spa salon. Yep, yeah, you heard it right, this excuse of a mother was in another town making the restaurant being the babysitter while going to a spa for more than three hours. And guess what? She didn't seem to care about the issue. She didn't seem to realize how wrong and problematic she was being for leaving her son in a restaurant for three hours in a foreign town from where she was from. I think she got arrested for it. Poor kid. At least he had food. If you were a worker here and you saw some kid literally abandoned for multiple hours, would you go and buy them something cheap for them to eat? Or would you rather just call the police and leave them to handle it? Let me know what you would do. Our next story is from Alfie CC. Entitled mother blamed my tiny dog for her child throwing up all over the bus seat. I just remember this story yesterday. It happened quite a long time ago. I was only 14, I think. Not sure anymore, but it doesn't matter. I went to a bigger city with my dog to play Pokemon Go and buy some clothes. My dog is a Shih Tzu, one of the smallest breeds. And even for that, he's pretty tiny. And while most people assume small dogs are aggressive, it's not the case for him at all. Even when he was younger, he was calm, a little shy, and some people would call him lazy. Never barks or growls or whatever. A boring dog, maybe, but he's fluffy and cute and behaves very well. And I always took good care of him because they're a pretty high-maintenance breed and prone to diseases and allergies, but they don't shed at all. In short, he's small, quiet, and well-groomed, and anything but a threat to humanity. When my bus came, I asked the bus driver if dogs were allowed in and if I can put him on a seat so he could sleep, as the ride would take almost two hours, and he said yes. When I told him I had a blanket with me so he won't be in direct contact with the seat, he even told me it wasn't necessary, but I still used it out of respect. After maybe 10 to 15 minutes, a woman came in with maybe a four-year-old girl who ran ahead towards the back of the bus immediately. The bus was fairly empty. However, the woman sat a few seats behind me. I sat fairly far in the front. She didn't notice me at first until an elderly lady came in the next stop and saw my dog and said, that's a cute little thing, and I offered her to pet him. My dog loves elderly people. The lady left the next stop. She was super nice and I wished her a nice afternoon. After that, the other woman, basically the entitled mother, stood up and yelled all across the bus to the driver, since when are animals allowed in here? 
and nobody really showed a reaction to this. She tried to repeat herself, but realized nobody paid attention to her, except another woman. She explained it was allowed, and the entitled mother immediately began voicing her not accepting this and how unhygienic it was and whatnot, and that woman she talked to seemed uncomfortable. But lucky for her, her stop was near, and she eventually left as well. My dog? Quietly sleeping and hardly visible, as I gave him the window seat. I listened to music with my headphones so I wouldn't hear her hyperactive child climbing, running, and screaming around the back seats. It didn't bother me much, but what the freak. The audacity to see my dog as disturbing. But now it was only me, the bus driver, and the woman with her child on that bus. Still almost an hour left until my stop. The child's been unusually quiet. She walked towards the mom and sat down close to her, just a few seats behind me. She couldn't really speak that well yet, so what she said wasn't clear to me and I couldn't figure it out. But after a while, I heard a weird sound and I turned around. The child threw up all over the seat and more was coming. I was grossed out. The entitled mother looked shocked at first, then looked around and ended up looking at me with a death stare almost. I was scared to be honest. Her child, loud in nature, wanted to be loud again, but she silenced it grabbed her arm and dragged her to the very last seats, away from the mess they made, not even bothering to clean it up or telling the driver at least. I was so scared of that woman to be honest, so I was too shy to tell the bus driver or say anything at all. So 10 minutes passed and it smelled so bad. I was about to tell the bus driver about what happened, but the child began being loud again in the back, trying to do some gymnastics or whatever, I have no idea. She was active and full of energy. I mean, we're speaking of maybe a four-year-old child here. The entitled mother was on her phone all the time and didn't bother. I think she was even on a call or something. Anyways, the child began running for some reason, and with full energy she came running towards the front. My dog, sleeping, woke up from it, and since he was a little startled, he let out a little quiet bark. To be honest, it wasn't even a bark, it was so quiet. Kind of comparable of a little sound people make when they get a little shocked but aren't shocked enough to scream yet. Hard to explain. But it was really quiet. The child, being amazed that dogs can make sounds apparently, started laughing at this. With her full energy she ran back, and as she ran she screamed, Mommy, the dog just barked. And after that all I could hear was a loud shocked, What? from Entitled Mother. She immediately pretended to be scared and called her daughter to come to her really fast. After that, I only heard a stomping towards the bus driver. I was about to reach my stop too and I was glad. I only heard a whispering and we stopped one stop before mine. All I could hear was them whispering and the bus driver stood up and turned around towards me and my dog. He looked at my quietly, peacefully sleeping dog. Then he looked at Entitled Mother again with an annoyed face. He was just like... Are you kidding me? And I felt so relieved because 14 year old shy and naive me thought I was in the wrong actually. He smelled something weird and discovered someone had thrown up all over the seat. And it was a heck of a lot. You wouldn't expect that much to come out of a maybe 4 year old. Anyways first the woman was like, I don't know, and I quietly told the bus driver it was the child of entitled mother. He nodded, and Entitled Mother began yelling, It wasn't her, it was that unhygienic monster I saw it, pointing at my dog. If I wasn't so intimidated by that woman, I would have laughed along with the bus driver, who burst out laughing so hard. I just smiled nervously. He just told the woman to go back to her seat, and she began throwing a tantrum before doing that, saying something along the lines of, I can't believe you're letting dirty, messy, and loud animals near my child. How can you let this thing be in here? It's loud and barking at innocent passengers, how dare you? You can be glad I won't sue you criminals. I'll write an email to your boss and never come here ever again. Kick that thing out of here, this is a bus for civilized people. And went to the back to her seat. The remaining five minutes were quiet. The bus driver winked at me and told me it's okay. He saw I was on the verge of crying. I'm sensitive, don't judge me. He quietly cleaned up the seat with a device. It was surprisingly fast. He told the woman to be quiet and went back to the driver's seat. He drove towards my stop. I tidied my seat and took all my stuff and left with my dog. 
I walked outside. My mom was waiting for me already. Last thing I heard was a banging on the window and the entitled mother screaming something and showing me her middle finger as I turned around to see. She was so in her element, but stopped by a loud and angry, hey, from the bus driver. So long story short, I should have taken the train. And she can be glad I was 14, shy, and naive at the time. If this would have happened to me nowadays, I could speak up for myself a lot better. As I was typing this, my dog was sleeping on my lap, by the way. He's my best friend. I think you could tell that that bus driver was a dog lover too, because they could see right through this entitled mother's BS. And also, right in that moment where she was talking about like, how can you let these unhygienic barking animals on this bus? I so wanted somebody to chime in and say something like, well, we let you on the bus, so... And our final story of the day is by Moody Lacking Food, Entitled Mother Tries to Get My 4-Year-Old Sister Arrested. So this was almost 12 years ago, but to this day I'm still proud of my sister and this still makes me laugh. I was 14 and used to take my three siblings to the park to play after school. My little sister and my little brother, both four, and my youngest brother who's three. I was playing football with my four-year-old brother outside of the park. I was playing football with my four-year-old brother outside of the park, whilst T, my best friend, 14-year-old male, and their five-year-old little sister was playing with my two other siblings in the park. This 13-year-old entitled brat came over and pushed my youngest brother off the swings incredibly hard. My best friend was playing with their little sister, but went over and asked entitled brother to leave my youngest brother alone and stop bullying little kids. The entitled brat told him to freak off and that it was his playground. My best friend took their little sister and my two other siblings off to the other side of the park to play on the train climbing frame. Their little sister fell off and my best friend wanted to help her clean up her knee and put a plaster on. Next thing we know, Entitled Brat is screaming on the floor and his mom, Entitled Mom, is storming out of her house screaming at the top of her lungs. Who does this little witch belong to? Pointing at my sister. It turns out that Entitled Brat had pushed my little sister and hit my youngest brother again. So my sister walked over to Entitled Brat, told him to leave them alone. Entitled Brat pushed her again, so she full on kicked him in the balls. I always told my sister if someone grabbed her or hurt her to kick them in the balls and run away as we lived in a dodgy area. Entitled mother is screaming that she'll get my sister arrested for assault and get me arrested for allowing her and teaching her to do it. Every parent in the park, plus myself and my friend told her that we would all press charges against Entitled Brat for bullying and assaulting children and unlike my 4 year old sister. He would be likely to be charged as there were multiple victims and is old enough to be taken to court. She threw a massive hissy fit, called the police, they turned up, asked questions and basically laughed at her and left. They gave the entitled brat a stern talking to and a warning and none of us saw him in the kids park again. Old enough to take to court? I'm trying to figure out how old this entitled brat was. How old is old enough to take to court? Teens? Low teens? Higher teens? I, I can't imagine that they were like 15 plus, right? Imagine being 15 plus years old and going to a kiddie park and bullying 3, 4, and 5 year old kids. I really hope they were younger too, because imagine not only that, but your mom coming out being like, who's bullying my baby? And it's your mid-teens bully son who tried to bully kids at the kiddie park and got promptly kicked in the nuts by a 4 year old girl. I mean, I don't know, the whole thing is just a little bit ludicrous. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.